In this video, we'll take a quick look at radiation emergencies and the principles of how to manage them. A radiation emergency is any unexpected event that leads to or could lead to the release of radioactive material into the environment. This could happen in a number of ways, such as the use or testing of nuclear weapons or accidents at nuclear facilities. It can also result from exposure to orphan sources, radioactive materials that have been abandoned, lost, or stolen, or from incidents in industry, research, transport, or medicine. Exposure to radiation can happen in different ways. One type is called irradiation. This happens when the body is exposed to penetrating radiation from a source. Another type is contamination. External contamination refers to radioactive materials that settle on the body's surface, such as the skin, hair, or clothing. Internal contamination occurs when radioactive materials enter the body through breathing, eating, absorption through the skin, or injection. If those radioactive materials are absorbed and taken up by cells, tissues, or organs, this process is called incorporation. The response to an emergency will depend on many factors such as the type of radiation, the scale of the incident, the extent of exposure or contamination, the population and environment affected, and emergency protocols in place. Some of the key actions include preventing exposure to the radioactive source. This could involve containing the radioactive source, evacuating the area, or sheltering indoors to reduce exposure. Next is decontamination, both external and internal. External decontamination involves thoroughly washing the skin and hair to eliminate radioactive contaminants and removing contaminated clothing. Internal decontamination involves using medical countermeasures. There are several options available, such as potassium iodide to block radioactive iodine uptake in the thyroid diethylene triamine pentaacetate to promote renal elimination of some radionuclides, or Prussian blue, which binds and eliminates radioactive cesium and thallium through the gastrointestinal tract. Cytokines, such as colony stimulating factors, may be used to manage bone marrow suppression. Other medications may be used to manage specific symptoms or complications. Other aspects of care include managing any injuries, providing supportive care, and addressing psychological needs both in the short and long term. Managing mass casualties may be required depending on how the radiation emergency occurred. In some cases, environmental decontamination may be required to remove radioactive substances from soil, water, and the food chain. Risk communication is essential because clear, accurate, and timely information builds trust, promotes protective actions, reduces misinformation, and supports effective public health and emergency response during a radiation emergency. Ongoing surveillance is essential to track radiation levels, assess environmental impacts, and detect potential long-term health effects. And that's a quick overview of radiation emergencies. For more information, have a look at the websites below.